feel the power? Can you feel the power? Feel the power of Double X9. Positive Power 21.org Internet Radio You are listening to Jerry Royce Live Worldwide Podcast. Hey, hey, hey. My name is Davis and I'm from Haiti. But I'm living in Dominican Republic. I'm here, Positive Power 21. Jerry was live, worldwide. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in. Welcome to Late Night. Late Night with Jerry Boy's Live, worldwide, and the Kim Kim right here. Right here. Power Late Night Radio. All right, y'all. Thank you for tuning in. We got a great, great show for you. Very interesting guest. We just finished listening to him on our. On the other system, uh, podcast, that's right, with uh, Dr. Dr. West, Dr. Annette West. That's right, Dr. Annette West, she pulls pulls everything out of her sleeve. Excellent, excellent interview. And don't forget, you can catch her every Monday right here on the Positive Power Double Side Network. That's right, starting at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. All right, before we bring um, Pastor Michael Walters out, let's, let's see what's, what's going on in um, Kimmy Kim's world. We haven't talked to Kimmy Kim in a minute. She's been avoiding Batman. What's up, Kimmy Kim? How you doing? What's going on in your Great. world? How about you? I'm good. I'm good. The holiday's around the corner. We're celebrating the birth of our nation. What you got plans? You got big plans? I just work. How about you? You're going to be working on Thursday. <laughs> yeah, it's called Mustang in the County. You're you going to be working? They're not going to give you guys off on Thursday? Get out of here. You kidding me? Break holidays. It's just another day anyway. But yeah, I gotta work. Man, wow. We gotta. It's getting it a big year. You guys got an audit coming up or something? You must have an audit coming up or well, payroll. <laughs> well, you know, county. Yeah, I know my my sister. Same thing, but I'm sure she's gonna take Thursday off because she was she was pushing this past week to get payroll out. And I know where I'm at. They push payroll out early too. They close it out on Thursday, so they can be off this coming Thursday. Yeah, the strategy you got to strategize, Kimmy Kim. So anyway, how's the family doing? How's the girls? Everybody's home. School is out. Um, well, um, I'm just been relaxing. I mean. You know, just enjoying life. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, summertime now. Fortunate for us in Maryland, the cicadas didn't come out like they said. They said it was going to be trillions of them. I haven't seen that one. <laughs> that one unless the birds got them. But anyway, I was grateful because we got we were able to take our little naps out on the deck, enjoy the the breeze. We we've been blessed with some some breeze lately. Um, after coming out of that heat wave last week. So how did you guys make out in um, St. Louis? on a heat wave wave and everything but we had our share of them some um, me you said you had your share of heat waves the it does and so as well hmm as well and so, hmm? as well. and, so <laughs> and you know St. Louis is prone to heat waves so that's nothing yeah, well, you know, we're prone to, um, you know, high humidities here, you know, on, on the East Coast. And, uh, I mean, our temperatures are very much like the Caribbeans. <laughs> I mean, you know, humidity is humidity. You know, it's like jungle, jungle heat. So, but it started a little early this year. We, You know, everything started in June. But we are entering the months of July. It's right around the corner. It was, actually, the day is July 1st. What, I'm, what am I saying? So, anyway, <laughs> so we welcome summer. Sure. Uh, so, yeah. Yeah, we work with open arms. So we we happy. It's beach time. It is beach time. All right. Well, Kimmy, Kim, you ready to speak to your guests? Are you ready? How about you? I'm ready. Let's, let's start. All right. Let me let them out. Let me let them out the gate. All right. Let's see. There he is. All right. Mr. Walters, welcome to Late Night Radio. How you doing, sir? Like a champion, like like a champion. It's a pleasure right. to be here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Look, man, I, I was ready to jump in the conversation when you, when you and Dr. West started talking about sports because you guys named all my favorites. Uh, golf. Oh, is that right? Golf, football, baseball. Oh, yeah. 
Those are my games. Yeah. All, yeah. All the above. Absolutely. Now, you said you only get a chance to play only twice a month. I, I feel I feel bad for you, man. You, you got to get out there at least twice a week. Well, <laughs> <laughs> it, 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 it actually, I, uh, because of the heat, you know, the heat is, you know, it, it, it sets you back. Yeah. I, um, I actually just came from a golf tournament from uh, Fort Jackson, South Carolina, uh, oh. on last Friday. Oh wow! And didn't do too well, but you know, <laughs> yeah, that's that's good that to get away. Yeah, yeah, you're right about that game, man. It's like you know, one second you tee off is looking good, next thing you know, <laughs> you feel like quitting. <laughs> Start over tomorrow. <laughs> I feel you on that one. I feel you. Um, so where uh, are you? Where are you based? Before I turn everything over to Kimmy Kim, I just want to know where are you based at. Where are you calling from right now? Out of South Carolina. Okay, that's right. South Carolina. Okay, you just you didn't mention it. All right, my wife Game just talk. my wife just came back from Charleston. She just landed um here in Maryland eleven thirty last night. The airport was packed, and she said the food was something. And I have to visit Charleston. That's all she kept saying. I have to visit Charleston. Yeah, that's the way we do it down here. That's that's how we do it down here. Old Southern cooking. Yeah, that's how y'all run. Now, now I was just in Florence, South Carolina last year about this time. Um, but we were stuck oh, at the really? hotel. yeah, but we were stuck at the hotel. It was like a, it was a conference, you know, um, conf- confirmation confirming one of the bishops. So we, so, okay. we, so we stuck. Yeah, and it was hot too, man. It was really hot that week, so we just stayed in. Well, Florida's only twenty minutes, twenty five minutes away from Sumter. Okay, now Bishop, she called it the Windy City. <laughs> I don't remember no wind <laughs> when we got off the airplane. <laughs> I don't remember no wind. <laughs> she must be, she must got confused with Chicago. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, look, you guys have a great show. Kimmy, Kim, I'm right here if you need me. Amen. Wow. Wow. Food is definitely good in South Carolina. I've been through there, but I have to stop. So it sounds like something I need to do and put it on my bucket list. How are you doing, my brother? I'm doing fine. Thank you. Thank you so much. A pleasure to meet you. Looking forward to it tonight. And, yeah. It's been an honor. And I just want to thank again Jerry Royce for this wonderful opportunity to be part of the Positive Power 21 family. And I thank you so much for your time and this fellowshipping time. But before we start this wonderful shipping, can you tell the listeners who is Pastor Walk? Oh, well. I'm trying to figure him out as well, you know? <laughs> I'm that answer. I'm still trying to figure him out. I think as life moves on, you uh, sometimes the way you used to be, you, you try to be evasive from that particular person, and you find out, hey, who is this guy? Uh, but nonetheless, I, I, I have somewhat of a, a uh, an idea of what he's like anyway. Uh, at presently, I... I um, I'm an entrepreneur here uh, in Sumter, South Carolina. I also pastor a church called Life Changing Christian Center. Uh, and we pretty much, our, our um, services are 7 o'clock on Sunday uh, via Zoom. Um, here in, in Sumter, I, uh, I'm a general contractor, build houses, um, churches, funeral home, you name it, I can do it been doing so for quite some time. Um, Also, uh, an owner of a residential care facility, a 22-bed assisted living facility. And um, I, uh, what else? Well, who else? I mean, I'm doing a lot. Building homes, funeral homes. uh, You're taking care of these seniors and church and... Oh my God! You know, I'm wondering. I, you know, it's too much. But you know, I, I just enjoyed. I just enjoyed. I he spent like 22 years in the military. Uh, retired from the military as well. Um, thank but, you for your uh, service. Thank you so much. Um, but I, I, I just, um, I just find myself being very active, being you know, being a participant in a lot of things within the community. And so forth. And mainly, my primary objective is uh, after I wrote this book, setting the truth free. That's the name of the book. 
And my primary objective from with that was to make sure that I wanted to communicate um, to to everyone my new direction. You know, my intentions become stronger as I began my new directions. And um, so I just primarily just wanted to evoke a greatness and to be able to set um, others, people, truth free. Let them know that it's okay to be them. It's okay to embrace transparency. Yeah. Wow, that's beautiful. Transparency is really hard to find these days because sometimes people are trying to be something that they're not and just allowing the true beauty to just come out. That's important. Thank you so much for telling us that because it defines who you are as a person, you know, <laughs> transparency. Be you. It's okay to be you. Yeah, and, and you know, um, Kimmy, may I call you Kimmy, or how would you, what, what do you prefer for me to call Oh, absolutely. No, you're yeah. fine. I love it. I, um, yeah, so I, it, the, one of the funniest, the, the funniest thing is that what I'm trying, to, what I'm finding out is um, in my book, I wrote um, Sending the Truth Free, um, is that a lot of time we don't, want to embrace our transparency because many times we really don't know who we are. And um, mm -hmm. in the book I wrote, it was about, um, you know, how we were young coming up in our community. And even though uh, our parents, they meant, you know, meant for us to do well. And they were, you know, they taught us morals, which is, is, is commendable. Uh, but at the same time, we have so many other influential people who are in our lives that was actually evoking some of their influence in our lives. And um, they meant well, but as you get older, you realize that um, those were their truth. And for some, for somehow, mm. they taught us their truth. And as I got older, I realized that I began to wage war against that borrowed truth. And and by me wage wow. war that that my primary objective is to pretty much to go back over everything that that I can think of and just reevaluate um, everything that was told to me. And um, and I realized that. 80% of who I was was not me. Oh, wow. How did that make you, you feel? Know? How did you feel about yeah. that? And, and confused, struggling. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was yeah. a challenge because my the book was talking about setting the truth free. There was something inside of me that was desiring to come out. But I suffocated it. Mm. I let I let it lie mm. dormant within me, believing that the ways of the world or the wows of the devil, so to speak, um, they were coming eat up my flesh. And as a result of that, I just um, began to wage war against those those particular truths. And what were some steps that you took to come out? Because you are we're, we're on radio and we may have someone who are going through the same, you know, trying to figure out who are they and they're trying to figure out a way to, you know, sometimes we are filtered with so many different things like you should do this, this for my family, friends and enemies, right? And so we take a part of some of the things that they tell us and you're like, maybe I should try that. Maybe I should try that. What are some of the stuff that you took to to freedom? Well, once I determined I was ready to lay aside my former identity, I did just that. I set aside not only for myself, but for others. Okay? Because what give me what, what I find to be so interesting is the fact that it does it, it's you don't it don't it don't take supernatural to just be 
to become natural. It's just okay just to be you. Take I don't think we spend time mm. with ourselves because we are constantly chasing. We are constantly want to <laughs> be somebody. We want to be somebody, but we never desire to be who we are. It's always we are trying to be mm. like this and that and and we're chasing. And we're constantly chasing. We've been yes, chasing. I agree. We, we love to chase, and it's just so embedded in us. It's a natural instinct. It's it's a natural innate for us to want to be like somebody. And then, mm. then here we are. Here we are. That little voice inside of you is just saying, hey, you'll be amazed to know what's inside of you. And that voice yes. inside of you. That truth inside of you is just waiting to exhale. It's just waiting. It is waiting. <laughs> it's just waiting to exhale. And you know what the, the uh, interesting thing? The, the biggest challenge is change for a lot of us. How how much impact was change for you? Because you know you're you're used to being a that person and you know you've been this person for so long and then all of a sudden you realize this is not what you want to become so you're like what should I do you in that you're at the end of the road and you're have a, a, a pitchfork and you're trying to decide which way to go should I go left or should I, should I go right how did you know that it was time for you to do that and how hard was it because change is very challenging for some people including myself, you know, I'm still learning myself each day because I realize, you know, it's okay to be you. I love that. It, it is okay to be you. And, and to be, I, I just think that sometimes we just don't appreciate because, you know, the experience that we, um, as life moves on, even when you were young, you have certain experiences in life. Mm-hmm. There's certain, you know, traumatic experience. Some people are able to overcome it. Some people, it just stays with them, and it, it, it just stays with them for a lifetime. And they struggle with that. And, and I believe change takes place, and the Bible put it this way here, and I just want to just emphasize this. The Bible said, be ye not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed, not by nobody else's mind, but by your own mind. And so by renewing your mind. Renewing mm-hmm. your mind. You have to renew that mind. It's it's difficult. It's difficult because of the fact of the matter because we only find out later how much we have been cemented in this. Yeah. We now once we get to the point where we realize that the chase is not about that that we find ourselves in certain struggles, financial struggles, identity struggles, um, relationship struggles, and then we and then we try to figure this thing out. We try to figure it out, and it's a difficult it's, it's a difficult challenge. It's a very difficult yes, challenge, is. but the bottom, but the bottom line is, uh, you can rise above your circumstances, and that's something that you have to know. You have to understand that your experiences in life come to make you strong. They really do. Uh, your experience doesn't should not be defeating you. And I think a lot of times when we look at our experiences, uh, we don't look at our experiences as an asset. We tend to look at our experience as a reflection. And what that means is if if you look at it as a reflection, then you compare with other experiences. But when you look at it as an asset, you realize that those things that set you back are the primary thing that's going to make you strong, <laughs> that you are in need of that. You are in need. And the funny thing is what I find out that failure has actually been very been rewarding for me. I mean, it, I'm telling your you. character. Oh my, you're absolutely right. 
absolutely right. Because you because if everything. You know, <laughs> come on, come on, come on, Pastor no, Walker. <laughs> yeah, you're, you're exactly right because your failure, your 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 listen. I mean, if you do not, if you do not experience, if you don't experience the setback, it, it's kind of very difficult to know when you have won. Exactly. And so, because I remember. I remind it, even Jesus had a setback when he was in Patmos and he was saying to myself, his father, uh, if this is your will, please pass the cup. And he says, if this is your will, if it's not, then I will do the cup. You know, I'm paraphrasing, of course, because he was going through that and he was, and he was perfect. And then uh, another moment when I realized that when he says, Please forgive them, Father, for they know what, not what they do. And I mean, show his humanity. He was suffering there. You know, it's just amazing how you just said that. If even if he had some failures and he was, you know, um, he came down to die for us and he knew his purpose. So you said a lot because. Some people think this life is going to be perfect and there's no failures and you're not going to have to go through things if you just plan, 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 but you could plan them, but God knows your destination. Oh, Absolutely. You're amazing. <laughs> exactly. Check this out. Check this out, right? This is so, this, this is so, this is, this, this is, even when Jesus, you know, the Bible, you know, Jesus was in the synagogue when he was 12 years old. Okay, think about that. He was talking amongst the, the scribes, and, and 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 he was just, and they asked him, "Well, dude, where you get this information from?" This is at twelve years old, and what I'm saying is this: a lot of us obtain most of our victory in our youthfulness, yeah. but we never paid any attention. Now, watch this. The Bible in itself does not bring Jesus back into the picture. It starts off and leaves him at 29, I mean, I'm sorry, at 12. And by the time he's almost like 29 or 30 years old, then the Bible brings him back. All that time in between there, he was getting to know who he was. He was fighting. He was he was studying, he was learning, he was gaining knowledge, he was getting wisdom. He was having time, spending mm. time with God, his father. He was all this time was his time. And so when they bring him back on the scene, he was the man. <laughs> yeah, all man. power. Yes. And it all power is. His hand. And and this is what this is what we need. This is this is and, and this is the thing that we we don't like to spend time with ourselves. You know, we're always hustling, the bustling. But you got to spend time with yourself. You got to read. You got to okay. learn. You got to know. You know that. You know, spend this time with you. Let's take a look at who you are, because you are great. Exactly. The Bible put it this way: Great is He that is in you, than He that is in the world. The world. So in essence, everything now. that you, everything that you need is in you. It really is. Absolutely. A lot of times, we, and, and Kimmy, you got me started now. So you doing this interview? You, <laughs> I don't know, why you, did this. you know, I fellowship, and oh, I you, you know, you no, 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 no. You're helping. You You're helping you someone. You got me. You got me flowing like this now. <laughs> That's the holy. That's the spirit. That's the spirit. Trust me. <laughs> it's in you. <laughs> it, it's in you. That's why it's in you. It's you. It's the brand new you. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Because the reason why I like to um, about this is because. We're taught that we have to be a certain way. Our hair has to be a certain way. You have to dress a certain way, and mm. that is not true. You could be you, and if some 
people or a group of people doesn't accept you for who you are, it's okay. I'm being among those who do. Absolutely. Everyone is not going to accept who you are because sometimes the people who don't like who you are has issues with themselves. Until they address Absolutely. themselves, they cannot welcome you in. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. And and and, that, and and the funny thing is that because of that, we seek validation from others. Mm. And Deep. that I mean that is such as it's it's just almost like you surrendering your potential. It's like mm. you're surrendering. Like you're surrendering the possibilities, the greatness that is that that's, that you that dwells inside of you because you don't feel like you have it because no one validates. It's all on social media. We it's all ever wrong. We just need it for some reason, and I just think that we don't need validation from from everybody. Like we don't need it. Actually, I do believe in my book. I, I have something what they call your achievement truth. You know, achievement but, truth is almost. You know, I'm trying to get to this wonderful book. I'm so sorry about this, but I need to get to this wonderful book. What is the name of your book? And give us some, just a little nugget about it, because I want them to be enticed to the point where they buy it. And where can they purchase the book? Because her book sounds very, uh, uh, very vicious when it comes to the reading, you know, because reading, you have to feed your mind. Sounds like really good food to um, really gravitate towards. Do you mind yeah. giving us yeah. um, uh, what made you write and the synopsis and the title and where can we find it? Yeah, well, glad you asked. Uh, you can find it on Amazon, Amazon.com. Um, it's called Setting the Truth Free. You will see it mm. because it has that handsome young man on the, on the photo on there. That would be Michael Walton, <laughs> and um, it's, it's color black and white, and it, it has it. It's okay to be you. Embrace transparency. It's only thirteen ninety nine. It's not a large. It's not a a, a long book. It only consists of probably no more than about seventy pages. And my primary objective, about sixty pages, really. Primary objective was just to be the best book. Plan. Yeah, it's, it's just get on the best book to the point. Just get to the point. Absolutely, absolutely, and I just, I just following, I just, um, just thought that this book would just be such inspiring, um, you know, to anyone. It's, I mean, it's, it's, especially, you know, just embrace the kids, especially the kids. The kids are being challenged these days and so forth. It's, it's really wild out there, and um, I just hope the parents would pick this book up and just. Read it to the children to you know just to encourage them um, that they're not alone. I mean they're really not, but they have to just to believe in themselves. They just got to believe in themselves. And I just find that um, a lot of times I know we got to go, but you know what, Jimmy? One of the things that I find out, I found that um, what we don't do a lot is tap our shelf on the shoulder. We we don't. For some reason, it's like, it's, like, it's, it's, like a, it's like you don't supposed to do that. You're not, you're not supposed to, you know, because it's boasting or it's, and, and I, I just totally against that, opposed to that. Because if, if you're, if you got your master, you got whatever, whatever kind of education you have, whatever accomplishment that you made it. You find that people are not going to tap you on the show there. They're more like envy or jealous to some degree. And I'm just saying you have to appreciate where you came from and who you are, where you are. And if you don't do that, it's, it's detrimental. It's detrimental. And all you get, you realize that if you're disciplined, if you're not disciplined, if you're not um, standard, where in, in where you want to go, then you're going to find yourself just sitting in the back of the bus, so to speak, and that's not where we need to be. Oh, and 
glad that you brought that up because we have the tendency to tell our children, don't pat yourself on the back, let someone else edify you. And you're right, because that is what we were raised. And, you know, sometimes I think some of the things that we were raised by, it's not always really ideal. And uh, it's okay to say, I did this, I accomplished this, I'm proud of me. It's nothing there, there is nothing wrong with that. That's just edifying that you have one goal, um, you know, mark off of your to do list. And I'm grateful that you said that because, um, I think that's some of the struggles that some of the teens are having now because they don't know how to embrace that. If we were taught not to do it and we tell our children don't do it, and then it's like really mm. transferred down to the next generation. So just yes. to know yes. that there are people who believe in, it's okay to embrace yourself. It's hard. It's hard out here. And when you do overcome a milestone, it's okay. It's really okay. Yeah. Wow. What are some of your hobbies? Oh, my God. Football, basketball, golfing. I golf quite often. And um, of course, I like basketball. I um, I just like just about all sports. Work out. I got to work out. Got to got to keep the body eating right, eating healthy. That's, uh, that's very important uh, to me. Um, I, I kind of like a um, I won't say a vegetarian, but I'm pretty close to eating that kind of just nothing. Get away from the salt, stuff like that. I'm just trying to look good, stay feeling good as I get older and, and making sure that they limit the pain. Oh, wiser. We're getting wiser, not older. We're getting wiser. You know how it gets better with time. <laughs> <laughs> I agree with you on that one. Absolutely. <laughs> you know, the wine, it, it, it tastes better with time. Wine tastes better with time. So we're just getting better with time. That's all. Okay. Okay. Oh, knowledge uh, that wisdom is amazing yes indeed so the one that you know what other people believe about you is not important it's what's important is only exactly. what you believe about yourself you know oh, i'm still people, reminded you, know? you can can always um i'm still reminded i remember the saying that says so many people you can have on your front row and you just confirm that too. You can't have everybody in your front row and whoever is on your row is going to encourage you. They want you to do well. Mm, yeah. You said it again. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. Man, I'm just honored tonight to be honest with you. I really appreciate the opportunity to, you know, just to break bread and to share, setting the truth free. It's okay to be you. I'm just, I'm just excited uh, about where this book is. Have taken me to this level of um, running a corporation and um, and just being able to. Yeah, now to that too. I got to ask you a question. You're a yeah. general contractor. Have built homes and general homes and churches and anything else. Yeah. How do you find the time to do that? and writing oh my goodness and then you have other hobbies like working out and coffee football, and eating well I mean, eating well helps you that but yeah. how do you have time for general contracting it takes what an average two or three years to build a building and I mean really do it, do it the right way I mean <laughs> well you know I, I, I guess I uh, inhabited all this discipline when I was young. I just I started young and everything. So I was I had my general contract okay. license in '97 and so forth. And of course, I grew up. My dad was a, comp or a, a, a contractor as well. And so um, I'm at a point now in my life where uh, I can pretty much sit back and allow you know the company to run on its own. You know, got some good and great employees who have actually put me in the position that I am in, and their their value have been such interest, uh, instrumental into why I'm was able to take some time out to write the book. So, a lot of my position where I'm at has everything to do with the people who 
who who surround me, who support me, who who actually I put around me, and they have taken care of me, and I really appreciate that without a doubt. Yeah, absolutely. That's amazing. Yeah. That's amazing to have people backing you and cheering uh, for you in the midst of look. And I mean, you are a writer. How long have you been writing? Now, of course, you write your sermons, but you know, putting everything in the book format, it takes talent. Did you know that you want to be a writer? And how long have you been writing? Well, I've been writing for like for the last two years now. This is two years and so okay. forth. There was Dr. West, you know, she was have been instrumental in me making sure that my book get out there. Um, and she has always have been with me, Dr. West. We we got ordained the same the same time during the same time in ministry, and um, so he said, "Well, look, it's by the time you get your book out there. You've been inspiring our <laughs> neighborhood today. You need to get out there and 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 so forth and showcase your, your you know what God have have blessed you with." And so I guess I'm pretty much I mean a wagon now. And um, just yeah. looking forward to see, you know, see where God's going to take this and so forth. Absolutely. Gotta Are you embracing you. your new, the new you? It's just oh part of the new God. you or the change you? Oh, my God, Kim, you just don't even know how exciting this, this, this spring is just, just, illuminating my whole entire being so excited and i exaggerate i'm just just when you get to a point oh i want you to express that because it's good to hear that because you're you're inspiring other people see you (laughs) when you you get to a point when you just like you know what god you know i'm at a point where i'm i'm like almost stopping and asking God to give, you know, I really am like, I'm stop asking God to give me things. I'm realizing that everything that I need that God has already given to me. And, the, and being that he has given me all these attributes, these, these, these gifts, what it has done for me, it have allowed me to, to not to go to God in the sense of asking but more so to be grateful and gratitude. So gratitude mm. where I'm at. And as a result of that, I'm just like, okay, God, check this out, right? What do you see now? How you like me now? You know, I'm not asking you for this anymore and that anymore. And, and all alone, I realized that what you really wanted from me was to demonstrate and bring out all the gifts and talent in which he has given me. He said he created me in his image and his likeness. And as a result of that, I want to show him exactly what it is that he created in me. So I'm not asking him for anything anymore. I, you know, uh, you know, if I want good help, guess what? I got to do it myself. I, I need, I need to take the time out and make sure it happened. If I want to be com- financial literate. I need to read the books. I need to do the study. I want God. How, how do you like me now, God? How do you like me now? So this thing, I'm just like, I'm just like on the chandelier, just swinging from one chandelier to the chandelier, you know, just showcasing the talent that God have, have, have actually expressed and given me. And so I'm excited. I really am. It's, it's, I'm excited. Just excited. Just excited for you because you're showing us it's okay to continue on being a life long learner. I tell my girls, uh, you be a lifelong learner. If you go, when you go to college, you're not going to be done with learning. You're going to learn some other things and then you realize you want to do this and you're always going to be learning. The day that you stop learning, the day that you are dying or dead mm. because you should be a really reach for something new every day. Like, wow, I didn't know that was it. Or something exciting. You know why? Because you want to feed that brain. Or you want to retain your wisdom. You want to continue on making sure that God is pleased with you as well. You want to make sure you are in his will, that you're doing what he wants you to do. So you're learning. You're, you're realizing that every 
Okay, it's just not about sometimes doing your will, but God's will. So I'm teaching my girls that. With that being said, what kind of legacy would you like to leave behind? Well, I have my kids, you know, I, my kids and my daughter, the, the legacy I want to leave behind uh, for my grandkids is just pretty much to let them know um, that there's nothing too hard, you know, hmm. for them. There's, there's nothing too hard. I mean, uh, I, I just want them, I want to them embrace a work ethic, a habit of, I want them to embrace that it's okay to be, especially my black men, men. I just, it's okay to be, be that, you know, be the provider, be the protector. I mean, I just want, I want a legacy to, to be able to go from generation to generation. It's about having respect for mankind. Yeah. Not even about, you know, having all the money in the world, as much as it's about, yeah. it's, okay to, it's okay to be them. To be able to smile, to be able to laugh, you know? Mm. It's, not, it's not the big thing. It's the little small thing, thing that we take for granted. Okay. So the legacy is just Absolutely. allowing them to embrace the, who they are. That's all. That's all. Yes, yes. Big. That's big time. Being, I mean, uh, you, you're saying you're setting an example. What's in the Bible? I mean, <laughs> you said it all. Of your all, continue on learning and knowing who you are in God. I mean, that's beautiful. Tell us about your Sunday service and what time does service start and where is your church located? Because I know. That Got some good preaching over there with this wisdom over the phone for thirty minutes. I can only imagine. <laughs> you know what? I tell you, I tell you what, what makes this. What, I tell you what, the Life Changing Christian Center. That's that's the name of the uh, the church. I started that um, um, almost like almost six years ago, and um, it's um, what I find out in, is that um, it's it's more or less getting away from the norm, getting away from the usual. Mm -hmm. It's, it's, um, I, I, I just think that ministry now and, and the way I, in, in this new, how I see things, I, I just think that, um, we have been challenged and I think that some of the teaching thing that has, is being taught, I think, in my opinion now, this is just me. Um, I just sense that that we need to take a look at it. We need, we need to look at how, because when you really look at it, we're not getting anywhere. I mean, what? we are. Hey, you are getting, You walk me up now. Come on. Come on. Come on. <laughs> we, we, are, we, are, we are feeling good, but we are not moving. That's nowhere. You know, we're not are changing. You're not, you see what I'm saying? We are excited, but we are not going anywhere. And what? and I, I'm sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> oh no no no! Preach! No, you're you're, you're you know, no. I'm just saying it's it's one of those so, things. Like, come on, you you're right. So so I'm so <laughs> I'm actually disappointed in. Mm -hmm. In, I'm disappointed in in how we are teaching. Prosperity uh, teaching some, now. I don't believe it. The, 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 the teaching that I, I just think that you will know the tree by the fruit it bears. If you look at our environment, our, our situation, it's a representation of the tree that we bear. The teaching and so forth. Yeah, it, it don't take a rocket scientist to see that there's no progression. I mean, we are to some degree, mm -hmm. but as a whole, as an individual, we, Not. you know, some people are, are, you know, excelling. But as a, but as a people, as a group, as a community, as a communal, um, it's, it's by the wayside. And so... So I think we got people in high places, to include myself. So, you know, I'm not discounting me out. 
um, that this thing need to be rehash how we how we spend time with God and what are we and how are we spend time with God because this is I mean we get excited but that's about it but when you look at everybody most folks mm-hmm. around you there we're struggling financially mm-hmm. our community is struggling financially mm-hmm. uh, we're not getting any place mm-hmm. and I'm just wondering you know is is this of God and and then as a result of that I just think that um uh, I just think that the we just need it, it, it needs a lot. We, I think we're going backwards instead of going forward, and I think it's all because of the fact of the matter is that we have been depending on other people and not trusting ourselves and not have enough confidence in who we are and in our belief in what God have created in us. So therefore. We let mm-hmm. someone pretty much draw the draw our map, you know, and we just follow their road map and so forth, and and that's only because we just don't want to be responsible, held accountable for for our actions. And I think absolutely, I think we- sometimes those those things that we are taught, like those instructions, can also be a stumbling block, a distraction from the purpose that God trying to tell us. And you hit it on the bullseye. Nothing has changed. As a matter of fact, our neighborhoods are worse off than they were when you compare it to the cities. We don't have a lot of the families. Most of the family households are ran by single parenting. And you're right, it's, I'm fed up as well. Um, I mean, with no disrespect, I mean, you're seeing the pastors, you know, being, you know, you're right. free, you're right. um, living large, but you don't see my yeah, you're, you're right. right. I'm on your side when, when it comes to that. You're right. I, I, I'm, I'm just, I'm just, listen, I'm just, I'm just, I am fed up, to be honest with you. Um, and, and I just think that what, what, what has to happen is that we've really got to, to take a look at ourselves and, and be able to search within and and just realize, mm. that, you know, everybody wants to go to heaven, nobody wants to die, but everybody wants to go to heaven. But then I don't want to go, I, I don't just want to go to heaven without ever knowing who I am. Mm, I don't want that's the most important to- thing. You got to yeah, know who I, you are. How can you go somewhere if you don't know who you are? I don't want to go to heaven, you know, and not know who I who you know. I just don't want to do that. I just want to know me, and and to know me is to me is to be in the will of God. Mm-hmm. I just truly believe that. I believe that to know me is in the will of God. To have confidence in who I am. Folks are depending on Pastor Walker. Yeah. Mm. Come on, Pastor Walker. Yeah. You're 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 bringing out the you're bringing out you're bringing out that preaching now (laughs) and the teaching (laughs) because you have to know who you are in the Lord. can you go somewhere if you don't know where you're going? I mean, he knows us better than we know ourselves. Both the manual, yeah. the Bible, for us to live by. Yeah. It. Yeah. It. It's, uh, it's, it's challenging. It's challenging out there, you know, Kim. It, it really is. And, um, you know, I just think that sometimes we just take things out of, you know, context and so forth. I just think that we're just, I think we're searching and we just, it's it's it, to me it's just sad. We're we're in a bad state. I just think we're just in a bad state. Yeah. I, I mean, but I, I I know all things are still possible. And I just believe that possibility is within each one of us to become to find out yeah. who we are, to be able to study, to be able to learn, to be able to like you're telling your daughters when you got relationship, it just everything is just chaotic. You know, everybody everything is just chaotic. Just, Oh, because sometimes, where do we go wrong? Good question. 
<laughs> that's a good question. Oh my goodness, that's a good question. <laughs> well, you want to write about it, right? <laughs> that sounds like a hey. That sounds like another book. That sounds like another book for you. <laughs> oh my God, uh, I'm just excited. I, I'm just yeah. excited where the Lord has, has, has where He has brought me and um, where He's taken us and. Um, I'm just excited. I'm just, I'm just, I really am. It's just, a, just a place. Yeah. You just when you get a place where you just feel confident in who you are, when you realize that, yeah, you know, that if you make a mistake, that hey, you can get back up, and it's never too late. You can never count mm-hmm. yourself out. You know, regardless of your setbacks in life, where you come from, it doesn't matter where you come from. No matter what your situation was or even is, um, you're never alone. Forgiving, yeah. He's definitely forgiving. He's a forgiving God. Absolutely. 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 So, well, Kim, that's my book, and I'm like, in, love it. That, and my book is, you know. Step in, step in. Huh? But where can you said it's on Amazon? Your book is on Amazon, and you have a website. Uh, don't have a website yet. Um, this is what Doctor uh, uh, Dr. West was telling me to go and get all this other stuff there, you know. But um, you can find my construction company, all other stuff. But my book and everything is um, it's just on Amazon right now and so forth. But I'm hoping forward to to getting out okay. and um, going more places and and trying to make this happen and with interviews such as yourself who got me all rattled up and roaring uh think i'm gonna like this you're no it's already in you it's already in you so how can people reach out to you if they want to um have you as a guest or talk to more about your book where can they reach out well i can give you my email address i'm on facebook at uh, michael michael walters um, you can find me on there, Lincoln as well. That's M I C H A E L A W A L T E R S. And um, of course, and my um, email address is T W R G 32, that's Tango Whiskey Romeo Golf 32 at yahoo.com. So amazing. <laughs> I like that. The smooth that makes sure that people understand those letters. See? <laughs> You're definitely a businessman. You're a businessman. Yeah. Make sure you get all the contact information. <laughs> Absolutely. Wow. My goodness. Wow. Pastor Walters, I'm You're amazing, man. I just want to thank you for this time. But before you go, I would like for you to pray us out. I want to bring in my boss um, just to make sure that man Jerry Royce doesn't have anything else he would like to ask you. And boss man, are you available before we? No, I'm it's right hard here. to say no to this wonderful interview. He, he is amazing. Was, I mean, it was very, it was very powerful. Yeah. And I, I just want to say, uh, Pastor Walt, I don't have no question for you, but I want you to, you know, keep doing what you're doing. I mean, you share so much, but the main thing I got out of it, too, and my sister and I had this conversation just the other day about enough men over 40 are not taking good care Mm. of themselves because the dating pool is already rough when you're over 50 anyway, but then when you're meeting guys that are unhealthy, it makes it even tougher. So um, keep encouraging. Keep encouraging. You are so right on that. And, And you know what? Playing golf. Every opportunity, eating right, it makes a difference, man, because we're dying. Yes. Uh, quickly. We're dying. Yeah, yeah quickly. Young men are dying. Yeah, and it's sad. Um, just lost a church member. He was cutting the grass. Had a heart attack the next day. So, um, oh. yeah, just cutting the grass and 90 degree temperature. So that just shows uh, you right there that, you know, a lot of us just not in good enough shape that we can't even handle our own environment. Um, one of the things I've been getting a lot of, getting a lot out of lately is boxing. I just found that that's like the m- most intense workout that I could, you know, for my age, you know, I love the yeah. golf and I love basketball, but 
you know, I'm not that limbo to be playing those young guys now, and I can't play football or flag because of the, you know, the yeah. injuries. But I find Absolutely. boxing and um and and and, and treadmill, of course, working out the equipment. You know, you can't go wrong with that. But I just feel like yeah. I found myself working out and training to be prepared for my boxing class. It's almost like competing mm-hmm. against myself. You know. So, uh, Sam, yeah, keep doing what you're so you doing. Played sports, you were younger too. Uh, yeah, yeah, played them, played them all. <laughs> I was in, I was oh, in the right. leagues, out of leagues, you name it. Yeah, year oh, round. Man, yeah. Ice skating, you throw it in there. Yeah, we did it all. My neighborhood, we were very competitive. Not skating, but you did ice skating. Okay. Yeah, we did roller skating, ice skating. We did everything. Yeah. Stick yeah, ball, did baseball, that, you softball, yeah. you name it. Pedal ball, but that, pickle ball. That's going to be a loss right now for these kids, right? Man, I hope the Olympics encourage people. <laughs> that's all I want to say. <laughs> you know, get your kids involved with some type I, of something, you know, track and field, gymnastics. I put my kids in everything, man, because you know, that's that's what I grew up with. You know, even if we, we couldn't afford to do everything at the community center, we did it in the neighborhood. We created our own inner leagues, alley leagues, you know, church leagues, you name it, bowling. Yep. We did it all. Yep. Badminton, yep. volleyball. <laughs> I'm about to get in the pickleball <laughs> tournament soon. I'm just waiting for my class to come up. So, um, wow. Age is just a number. What? That's all it is. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Don't stop moving. And you feel you. good, too. That's you right. feel good about it. Oh, yeah, man. I'm, Paying attention to my diet, understand how it all works, and you know, my kid, my kids too. My daughter, she goes every day to the gym, and uh, my son, wow. he just finished school, so he's taking a little break. But um, he's as a matter of fact, he got a job with the NFL, so he's probably going to want to get back in the weights <laughs> weight room. Oh, exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, uh, is man, he playing in that part? He just he working with them? Yeah, he's going to be working as a technician. Um, you know, providing, wow. you know, make sure the, the news guys got their sound right in the stadium, all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So he's excited about that. Just a stepping stone to something bigger. Yeah. Because he's been with me for a long time since he was 14. Can me tell you that? He been, we've been filming concerts and stage plays. You name it. <laughs> since he was 14. Yeah. He's 21 now. I feel so old. Oh, my goodness. I, I feel old. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <gasps> Yeah. Oh my goodness. Yeah, I came out with honors and so he was my last one. So I had three kids graduate from college from from HBCU. So it's been an honor to God to uh give me that responsibility. Uh thank him for the man, opportunity. That's yeah. That's good stuff, man. Yeah. I mean it's good to hear that. It's good to hear that. It's kinda hard to find it nowadays though. It is. It's good. Mm. It's good, man. Yeah. Good kids. All right, man. We ready for you to pray us out, and thank you for blessing our audience um, with your knowledge, your life, your journey. And uh, we want to have you back, man. I got other shows yeah. that those, those audiences would love to hear you, hear your, your testimony. Amen. Absolutely. Wow. Absolutely. Hey, man, thank you. <laughs> thank you, Miss Kimmy. I thank you, and God Ross. I I I really appreciate the opportunity to give me this, you know this position on this platform. I'm really been honored as a result of it, too. Thank Amen. you so much. Amen. Amen. The honor one. That's right. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. Thank you, Jerry. <laughs> and it's funny, um, I, get, I get calls from a lot of our international listeners on um, WhatsApp and uh, Messenger, and they just love to hear the American lifestyle, you know, how the Christian brothers and sisters are just, you know, especially African-American. We have all persuasions on the show, but they especially love to hear the stories how um, African-Americans are, Stepping out, you know, mm-hmm. especially during COVID, we didn't let that stop us. You know, a lot of us are doing some, doing great. And I, I was listening right. to what you were saying about, you know, the pulpit. And, you, and you're right, man. I, I think, I don't know. Uh, it's, 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 it's sad, man. Yeah, it's going to be a reset. I think we're just going through a reset period and things will get better. To take a guy like you to to get it going, amen. Yeah, amen. Amen. And and and, just, amen. and and to help you out with that, we are pushing 
uh, ministry TV programming on our network on Cablevision. So we have some some young people like Dr. West and Jason Davis and Paula G that's taking their television shows to the next level when it comes to teaching. So um, we, we're, on, we're on the forefront, man. We, we right there with you. We hear you. Amen. I, I hope I could be a part of your, you know, whatever it is that you guys are doing, and, and uh, I can be supportive in any kind of way. Please, yeah. by all means. Yeah, well, I got I'm, your I'm email. Back. We can we we'll set something up and talk and see how you know. Okay. How you can That's be part great. of that. I appreciate cool. appreciate that. All right, we ready for you to take us out. Yeah, let us pray. Our Father, our God, we're just so grateful for what our ears have heard on tonight. We thank you, God, for giving us the wisdom and the knowledge to express. Uh, what you have given us on the inside. And as a result of that, God, we just say thank you. We thank you, God, for this this platform, Dr. Ross and Jimmy, who have just demonstrated the gifts and talent that you have given them. And as a result, God, have blessed so many. God, as we sit back and just observe what you're getting ready to do in our lives, we just say thank you. Continue to bless this ministry. Continue to bless our loved ones, continue, God, to move in a direction, God, that you'll be pleasing to your sight. And we'll continue, God, to give you the praise. For you are worthy to be praised. In your precious Son, Jesus, name the Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. To the Most High. Thank you, sir. Amen. Thank you for the Thank you, Doctor. powerful thank you. prayer. Thank you for your testimony. And we definitely want to be reaching out to you. And thank you, Dr. West, for the referral. Amen. Yes. All right, Kimmy, great job, Kimmy. Welcome back to Late Night. Thank <laughs> you. Yeah, we miss you too. Pleasure too. Yeah. Pastor Walter, he is amazing. Yes, sir, man. He's a general contractor, a writer, and very, very nice. So much to Walter and Jerry. Yeah, we can't wait to work with him, man. He, he's just like me. That's why they call me Batman. They say, when do you sleep? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we got plenty. We got a lot, to, a lot of work to do for the Lord. You know. Yeah, amen. 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 That's right. Being a servant, it's not easy work, but somebody got to do it. All right, let's get out of here, everybody. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in to Late Night Radio with Jerry Boys Live Worldwide and Kimmy Kim. And again, Pastor Walters, thank you again. And we will talk to you soon. Take care, everybody, and we see you tomorrow night, starting at eight o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard Time with. With our Transforming Lives Bible Radio with Dr. V. Can you feel the power? Can you feel the power? Feel the power of Devil Exile. Worldwide podcast. Hey, 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 my name is Davis and I'm from Haiti, but I'm living in Dominican Republic. I'm here, Prozive Power 21. Jerry was live worldwide. I'm from Baltimore, Maryland, and you're listening to Jerry Royce Live Podcast, the best international radio station in the whole wide world. What's good, y'all? It's your man, Scola De Niro from the multi platinum group, Drew Hill. And I'm proud to say that I'm from Baltimore, Maryland, and you're now listening to my man, Jerry Royce, live partner, the best international radio station in the whole wide world.